everyone. I am going to call this meeting to order. Ms. Clare, do you mind taking a roll call attendance, please, ma'am? Here. 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 Thank you so much. School board members, y'all all have an opportunity to review the agenda. I will now take a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Awesome. Well, first of all, I'd like to take a minute and I'll welcome everyone tonight. I really thank y'all for coming out here in the gas shortage and spending your gas to come here tonight. Well, it's been a long time since we met, and I'm going to guess it's probably the first part of last year since we met, probably January, February, since we met last time. So I'm just going to kind of take a minute to tell you where we left off, kind of how we got where we are, before we turn the presentation over to Josh. But if I remember correctly, when we met last, last January, February, whatever, we had picked an option which was option 8A, which was well over $100 million. And it was kind of decided that, that was probably more than what we wanted to spend. So we went back to Josh and had him do some more drawing up. Got some different options spending a lot of money, a lot less money. So he came up with some different options of in the um, $48, $58 million budget range. We met back and forth with the board of supervisors a couple of times in small committee. You know, it was a project committee that we needed to look at our policy. So we brought up some different options in the policy. So where we're at tonight is, and I'll, 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 let, I'll let Josh go through the price tag and stuff like that and kind of mess them up. We have probably some different options, a couple of different options of schools, of new schools, uh, putting them a couple of different places, and a couple of different options. So all that's in the presentation, the money parts of the presentation, and the ball part is kind of in the presentation. So unless anyone has any questions where we got at now, I'm going to turn it over to Josh. Before I do that, is anything anybody in the steering committee would like to add, say before we get started? Okay. Well, Josh, good evening to you in Charlottesville. How you doing? Oh, fantastic. Uh, uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, uh, it, is a, it is a beautiful night and even here in Charlottesville. And I would love to, uh, uh, to be with you tonight and spend my gas if I had any. Uh, Charlottesville, <laughs> Charlottesville, they decided to empty all the tanks and not share it with us. Uh, so, we're, uh, so tomorrow night, I will, be, I will be joining the group tomorrow night. Uh, uh, thank you all for allowing me to present virtually this evening. Um, uh, are, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Prier, Prier and uh, uh, Mr. Warwick, are we ready to... Uh, uh, start presenting, or is there any questions you want to start off with? A little bit, is that possible just a little bit? Yeah. It's just a little bit. Just one minute, Josh. And thank you for tonight. We wish you could have been here, but we understand. <laughs> okay, go right ahead, sir. Okay. Um, so thank you all for, um, uh, for being here this, this evening. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, two different options uh, for, uh, for placement schools. And uh, we're going to show you some images. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about costs and cost savings. Um, and then we're going to be able to open it up for questions. Um, and instead, if, uh, um, if anybody has any questions uh, throughout the, the process, feel free to, um, uh, uh, we'll try to, to answer them as we go. Okay, so if we can... Uh, we can go to the first, uh, the first slide, or the next slide. Okay, so um, option number one, uh, what we're looking to do is uh, we would construct a new uh, uh, grades pre-K through sixth grade elementary school. Uh, what this would do is we would look to uh, possibly put this, uh, this building um, on the high school campus. So we're gonna talk tonight a little bit about three different options of locations. Uh, two of them would be at the high school campus and one uh, would, be, uh, would be at the uh, Totero uh, Elementary School campus. Uh, so this option would, I said, construct a new grades pre-K through six elementary school, uh, possibly on the high school campus. Uh, we would look to close the three elementary schools, um, also close the middle school. And what we do is look to expand your current high school uh, from a 912 to a 712. Uh, by moving seventh and eighth grade um, over into the high school with a small addition and limited renovations at the high school. Okay, if we go to the next slide. 
Okay, so, so I said what this option would do, so we looked at to, um, to construct a new elementary school, uh, we would replace Totero, Red Oak Sturgeon, and Meharan Palatin Elementary Schools. Uh, so the new elementary school would be constructed on BCS, BCPS uh, owned property, possibly at the high school campus, uh, along with, so with the addition at the high school to put seventh and eighth grade. Uh, if we did the high school um, addition, this would really allow us to, to separate, to properly separate seventh and eighth grade core classrooms. Uh, from the 9 12 grade classrooms. Uh, there still would be shared facilities, the, uh, the, the gymnasium, the auditorium, uh, you know, cafeteria, those type of spaces. Um, the tech center uh, would be receiving capital improvements over time, uh, over a serious time, basically as, as things would break or there'd be time for improvement, we would make those improvements. Uh, with both of the options, we'll talk about this option first. Let's talk about construction phasing. Uh, with this option, we would be able to construct a, uh, the new, new pre-K six elementary school, uh, so possibly at the high school campus. Uh, this allows us to build that building. Um, and then what we could do is, is close the three elementary schools, move the students from the elementary schools into this new building, um, and then either repurpose um, or um, you know, find another function for, uh, for those elementary schools. Uh, the, the nice part about this option is by constructing a new school uh, is we're really limiting the amount of, of uh, uh, disruption of educational programs. Possibly, you know, if we're looking at the schedule, moving uh, teachers, you know, at the end of the semester, at the end of the spring semester, uh, they could box up all their stuff. Um, and then over the summertime, uh, you know, we could move everybody over the summertime. So in the fall, um, all the students would be going to the new school. Uh, with the high school, uh, we could be constructing that new, uh, that addition, you know, over the, uh, uh, the course of about eight to 12 months. Uh, we would uh, try, so try to limit the amount of uh, disruption. So, and then uh, uh, we'd be able to move seventh and eighth grade over into the, um, into the high school addition. So really what we're looking to do is, is to limit the amount of disruption. Uh, so talk about pros and cons. Uh, so we're looking at pros. Uh, this, would, uh, this option would consolidate you know, all the school buildings under one campus, um, if the elementary school is located at the high school campus, it would reduce the total number of buildings uh, from educational buildings from seven down to just three. I said the high school addition would permit a, a clear separation of seventh and eighth grade and nine twelve for their core classes. Uh, one thing about the, the, this, this option is that this would really allow greater collaboration of teachers at the same grade level. Uh, so as an example, right now, instead of having a couple of kindergartens in one building and a couple of kindergartens and same thing with first grade in different buildings, now all the kindergarten teachers, all the first grade, all the second grade teachers would be in the same building. Uh, so that would really allow us, allow the teachers to be able to have a lot more collaboration, you know, amongst, uh, you know, with curriculum. Um, also, this would allow us to have a, a, uh, a greater equity amongst class sizes uh, so that, you know, we can, you know, try to level out and not have a, a, a larger disparity between one school versus another as, as far as the number of students versus the teacher ratio. Um, this can also, also allow us to have greater collaboration um, with larger classes by creating collaboration spaces, whether that's in the quarters or if that's, you know, that's uh, in, in larger collaborative rooms. And, and when we show you kind of a concept design that we've put together, uh, you can start to see some of those collaborative labs uh, that can be shared amongst grades. Um, another, another pro of this option uh, is that if the elementary school was located at the high school campus, uh, this would allow those, those pre-K through six grades to have access to that to the athletic facilities, uh, potentially that new athletic stadium uh, during during the course of the of the normal day, uh, so that everybody could share in that um, opportunity for intramural uh, type activities along with the, with physical education. When we're looking at cons, uh, really a con would be is that we we're looking to close the three elementary schools um, and also the middle school with this option. Okay, if we go to the next slide. Uh, so we're looking at cost. Uh, so said so this option, we would close Totero, Red Oak, and uh, Meherton Palatin um, elementary schools, uh, construct a new elementary. Uh, with the pre-K six elementary school, we're looking at a cost range of anywhere from 33 million to 37 million um, in approximate dollars. Uh, Asking why there's a swing. There's a lot of there's a lot of swing right now in construction costs. Um, also in availability of contractors, we're seeing uh, we're seeing some labor shor shortages in uh, in just subcontractors, masons, electricians, um, also depending on what site is selected, uh, there's gonna be a swing in cost for the site. Um, uh, and so uh, there is, you know, so we're putting a cost range, you know, in, um, in our construction costs because right now we're looking going from study into, into actual construction. 
um, and uh, in, into design. Uh, the high school, we're looking at a cost of anywhere from 6.5 to $7.9 million for that addition and also the limited renovations. Uh, capital improvements for the tech center, 1.6 to 1.7. Um, and then the school board office, uh, this could either be an addition at the high school or it could be a freestanding building. And we're looking at a little over a million dollars for the cost of that school board office. Uh, what's important here is not just to look at the construction costs, but also what are what are the potential cost savings that we could be observing? Um, by, uh, you know, we have, we, we've, we've discussed that there's a, a lot of capital improvements that are going to be needed um, over the next 20 years on your elementary schools and your middle school, uh, you know, along with operational costs. Uh, so when we're mapping out, you know, the cost for everything from, uh, you know, from operations to maintenance uh, to, um, uh, you know, to, to busing, you know, what we're looking at is some potential savings with this option from what you're current operating at of about $1.2 million. And, and let me explain this just a, just a, a quick moment, is that the, the savings is kind of a, a little bit of a, a, a down curve, because uh, what's going to happen is that with a new building, uh, you're going to have limited amount of maintenance, uh, you know, from the standpoint of, of a larger repairs, uh, roof repairs, uh, you know, the same thing with windows. Uh, so in the beginning, you know, when you have a brand new building, you're going to have significantly less operational costs, plus you're going to have, you know, better energy efficiency. Uh, so that's why there's going to be a savings as as the building matures and gets into its five and 10 and 15 and 20 year mark, that savings is going to drop off a little bit. So, you know, what we're what we're saying is the cost is, you know, that savings is going to be higher in the beginning um, as, as mature as, as a building matures, that cost savings will slightly decrease over time because they're the um, uh, you're going to have maintenance and other investments in the building just as a, any building matures. OK, so if we can go on to the uh, to the next slide. So let's talk about you know what what could this possibly look like, um, and these are simple sketches in a study you know in a study that uh, um, you know this is not the building design it is not designed yet. Uh, if if the the board so chooses to move forward with this project, uh, you know what we want to go through is a programming um, and a, a ed spec phase. Uh, you know uh, we're going to go through schematic design, design development. Uh, we're going to go through full land development. That's it's going to take time anywhere from eight to eight to ten to twelve months. Of time to go through design uh, before we would have the drawings ready to be able to give to a contractor and put it out for bid, uh, you know, uh, to be able to, to for construction. Uh, so this is so this concept uh, uh, is is showing it's an elementary school, and we'll get into the building design in a moment here. But what we're showing is a site uh, when we're looking at a, a new construction, uh, we're going to have a really uh, clear separation of a car drop off um, and pickup and bus drop off, um, all all funneling into the front entrance of the building. Uh, we're also showing in this concept, we're showing parking on, on flanking both the left and right. Uh, we would have playground area for both pre-K and K, um, and then a three, four, five, six playground um, area. Uh, we could do areas for, you know, on the, on the site for athletics. You can see a softball or baseball field there off to your left, um, along with general uh, play field for soccer, um, uh, you know, and football space. Um, so as we go down to the, to the next slide, let's talk a little bit about what a building could possibly look like. Uh, so, um, at the bottom, um, at the bottom of this of this slide, you can see that there's a, a pink space. Uh, that would be the uh, the administration space. So the the yellow area just to the right of that would be the front door. Um, and so that would be the area where the students would collect in the morning for uh, buses and car uh, uh, drop off and then pick up. Uh, so you can see the administrative suite would be the first thing with the secure vestibule. Um, you know, so that'd be it's a secure entry for the entire building. Um, just off to the left of that is the pre K and K area. Um, uh, outside of that and the, from the site would be there the playground um, and then really kind of the focus of this of this concept design is that each grade level would have its own wing uh, so as you're looking off to the right you see kind of three you know three wings that go just off to the to the right of the main commons uh, that would be a first grade a second grade a third grade and those we um, we don't need to go there yet but on the second floor then that would stack so it'd be a two-story wing and there'd be a, a, a fourth fifth and sixth grade uh, this design concept has a main street. Okay, so if you look at the north-south access coming off of the door, uh, to the right of that is the classroom area, and to the left of that is your commons area. So that, that main commons is kind of your, your main spine for not only for travel, for students to be able to get from the classrooms to the gymnasium, to the cafeteria, uh, you know, uh, you know, to, to, common, you know to, the, to the core spaces. Uh, but also, this is a fantastic space for gathering. You know, it's a space for uh, uh, you know for science fairs, 
uh, you know, and and for you know, one of the things that we want to try to do with with any design is is see how we can maximize all the square footage. That quarters are not just a space for travel; it's also a space for uh, for teaching. You know, for small group teaching, for large group teaching, um, and we'll get a little bit into. Uh, you can see the, kind of the three green squares. You know, those are your your collaborative areas. You know, where um, you know they're areas where they can open up. You know, those spaces can open up into the in the corner. We'll show you some images in a few minutes. Uh, but also, you know, they're they're technology driven. Uh, they're flexible spaces where you can have different types of furniture, um, and multiple classes can meet in these spaces. Uh, you know, for either you know inter you know uh, you know multiple third grades, multiple second grades, um, or you can have you know in intergrade meetings. Uh, you know that uh, maybe have a sixth grade and a kindergarten class meeting together for uh, for mentoring. Um, some of the blue spaces are your are your, uh, your arts, uh, you know, music spaces. And then if you look to your kind of the center in the purple space, uh, that's your gymnasium, uh, which is uh, going to be a multi-athletic uh, gymnasium for phys ed and also for um, extracurricular activities, um, along with bleacher, fold-out bleacher scene. Uh, the stage, which is kind of the purple space in, you know, just to the north of the gymnasium, uh, that is, is an opportunity for a, a double backstage where you have a, um, a, part, a sound partition that can open up on both sides, both in the gymnasium side and on the cafeteria side. Uh, so that way, depending on what type of activities you want to have. So as an example, if, if there's, a, um, uh, there's a play that's happening um, and you want to have more, more, a larger amount of seating, you know, we can put parents and, and, you know, and friends in the gymnasium side in chairs. Uh, the, the, the folding partition opens up, that sound partition opens up to a curtain, um, and that's where the proceeding open is for, you know, for the play. Uh, what's really nice about this concept is that students can be staging, you know, if they're part of this play, can be actually staging in the dining room and be fed from the back, you know, into the, into the back of the stage, um, and vice versa. So if you want to have different types of events and, and you want to have a dinner theater, if you want to have a more intimate type of atmosphere, the partition on the other side you know, of the stage can open up um, and have seating, you know, table seating, you know, uh, uh, you know, with a student event or an after hours event and have table seating um, on the other side uh, for that to be opened up. We, we found that the, the dual side of the stage is very, very popular. Uh, we've done it at, at a handful of schools uh, here in Virginia and in other states. Um, and uh, we'll show you some images of what that could look like in a, in a few minutes. Uh, the cafeteria dining is about 6,000 square feet, uh, fits anywhere from four to 500 students at any one time, uh, you know, with access, direct access out to the playground, uh, you know, new kitchen, uh, along with, uh, with serving lines uh, for, uh, for students, at least two serving lines for the students. Okay, so as we go, as we go up to the second floor on the next slide, uh, that simply stacks up to so, so the classrooms. Josh? Yes, sir, ma'am. Look, um, before you proceed, can we change the screen sharing to you? That way that you can move the cursor and show us the areas? Sure, I'd love to. Okay, thank you. Just give me one minute here and we'll... Uh... Can everybody see my screen? Okay, great. Okay. Okay, can, how about my arrow? Is that good? Here, let's do this. Let's change it to here. There we go. Is that better? Can you, everybody see my, my pointer? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so now as we're looking at the second floor, uh, so that would simply stack up. So on the second level, we would have the older students, you know, in the building. Uh, they have a little bit longer of legs. So we're looking at fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Uh, a couple of things that are important with both of the floors is that we are uh, we are intentionally designing um, uh, flexible classroom space, you know, for not only what we uh, your current student population, but then also classrooms uh, that can be fit out in the future. Okay. So example, right now we're showing five. Uh, I'm sorry, six fifth grade classrooms, six fourth grade classrooms, um, you know, and then this orange space can either be used for specials, you know, so different types of functions, a like collaborative space, or as you're looking in the future and you have additional students that come in, uh, we're putting, you know, we're putting additional classroom space um, in there in the design. Um, and again, this is only, a, this is only a concept. Uh, so that way that, you know, if, you know, if and when students, additional students come uh, that we have built in capacity. 
Uh, one other thing that's important is that because we're doing this in two classroom wing, uh, that that it, it's easy to expand doing two story cl classroom additions onto each one of the floors. You know, so as you're expanding two classrooms, you're really doing four. You know, as you're growing out that uh, as you're growing out the uh, the classroom wings. Uh, also, each classroom wing has its own toilet room uh, for both teachers, uh, students. Um, uh, has a uh, teacher workroom. You know, and you know. Uh, uh, also additional classrooms uh, for any type of special needs uh, or any type of breakout space. You know, so these are really flexible. These orange spaces are kind of flexible classrooms uh, that can be used for small groups uh, for, uh, for breakout sessions. Um, and then as, say, as I was saying earlier, you know, we're looking at opportunities for collaborative areas. And this is a learning stair. And we'll show you some images in a few minutes here of what a learning stair could look like. Um, really what is that? that's a, uh, a fixed stair where students can sit, can gather around, you can have multiple classrooms together. It also allows you go to go from the lower floor to the upper floor. Um, and uh, so we're showing additional specials. And then your media center, uh, which, would, which is also a library, uh, which, which would stack above the administrative suite. Okay. So just some images of what, uh, of what classrooms could look like uh, you know, one of the things we want to try to try to enhance is, is daylighting. You can see we have large windows, you know, in the classrooms um, that also have the ability for screening uh, to make sure that we can we can control that daylight. It's not too harsh coming in. Students have great views looking out of the classroom uh, surfaces. We can we can look at both a, a series of hard and soft surfaces in classrooms, uh, flexible furniture, you know, different types of furniture in a classroom. Uh, make sure we have, you know, enough storage. Uh, whether that's a flexible storage or fixed storage in the classrooms. You see here, uh, th these are different types of chairs. Uh, you know, all the chairs would either have casters or rollers so that way that they can, you can move around. Um, you know, a combination of both, uh, you know, tables, desks, you know, chairs with backs, uh, chairs without backs, uh, soft seating, you know, flexible teaching stations so that teachers can be able to move, you know, whether that's a podium uh, for technology or simply just a whiteboard that they can roll around the classroom to be able to teach. Uh, so, you know, the, uh, you know, colors, uh, you know, lighting that is both dimmable and uh, you can turn off in, in multiple phases. Uh, you know, a, a good HVAC that is both quiet um, and able to, uh, that is controllable. Um, and also, uh, we want to make sure that we're focusing on the ability for, um, you know, limiting, uh, you know, any types of, of uh, COVID or, or virus transmissions from classroom to classroom. You know, that is, uh, uh, that's becoming a more and more of a question, you know, is how are we designing HVAC? Uh, you know, that's filters, that's UV, uh, you know, there's a, there's a handful of things that, are, uh, that our engineers are looking at um, and implementing in schools now uh, that, you know, Hopefully, we never have this conversation again. Um, but if we if but if we did, we want to make sure that we're designing the schools that prepare for, um, you know, and 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 have those healthy environments. Um, I said the uh, now this is just another picture of this of the same classroom. I uh, can see there's uh, you know some color that's added into the classroom, you know, along with flexible seating, you know, and lots of daylight, you know, for and views out of the classroom. And not just classrooms but also those flexible learning spaces. Remember those green squares that we were looking at in the floor plan? Uh, so this is an example of, of, of one of those labs, you know, those flexible learning labs uh, that has said, different types of, of, of tables and chairs, all on casters that can roll around. Uh, you know, this is kind of a, a learning nook here that has, that has both low seating and high seating with tables. Uh, technology in the classrooms, lots of daylight, uh, you know, seating that has, that has backs, a soft seating, lounge seating. Uh, you can see here this this uh, um, this is another collaborative learning lab that has you know beanbag chairs at one day at one point of the day those can get stored. Uh, another class comes in they want to be able to use tables. Uh, these tables can actually fold up and be able to stack alongside of the room, um, and you can pull these chairs that all stack up. Uh, you know what what are you know what we're going to try to do with uh, with with any design whether it's a addition renovation or if it's a new space is make sure that we're designing spaces that are flexible. Um, and we're not limiting the ability for a teacher to teach, a student to learn, or a student to teach in those spaces. We're not the building does not limit that ability to, for uh, uh, for that activity to happen. Um, remember, we talked about that learning stair. Uh, this is an example of a learning stair. It's a it's a, a fixed stair that uh, allows the students to be you know to engage multiple classrooms. Uh, you know, teachers and students can be down in this space. Uh, down here, we have technology that can fold down you know either off the wall or out of the ceiling. Uh, you know, this also allows students to be able to travel from the lower level to the upper level. You can see there's stairs on both sides, you know, uh, to get up to the second floor. 
Um, you know, the, you know, these spaces uh, we're finding are really, really dynamic. Uh, they're out in the quarter, so they're very open. Uh, you know, it's great. You have a class that's going on another class kind of goes by and says, what, you know, what's happening here and, and, and learning can happen at any, in, in any place. Um, when we're looking at spaces for learning, you know, not just interior spaces, but also outside spaces. Uh, we'll go back to that, you know, we go now, uh, you know, is in between those wings, we have a great opportunity in between those classroom wings to be able to create dynamic outdoor learning spaces with, you know, with shading, you know, with spaces for science, you know, for science and, and uh, um, you know, we can put outdoor screens, you know, in these, in these spaces. What's important is that not only are there opportunities for learn, but they're also safe environments uh, where, where uh, folks, you know, they're, they're enclosed with either in fencing or walls, um, you know, that, uh, that we can have our, you know, teachers can, can feel comfortable going outside, uh, you know, in, you know, in, you know, uh, in good weather and, uh, you know, without having the, the concern of somebody coming from the outside in. Uh, you know, we talked about flexible learning environments, you know, with, you know, movable whiteboards, uh, technology, different types of lighting, uh, so different types of seating in all these spaces. Uh, going back to the, the shared stage with that, that partition, uh, this is an example at, uh, at Hugh Castle Elementary School in Augusta County. Uh, this is an example of that folding partition that is a sound partition that is actually on both sides of the stage, both the front and the rear. Uh, in this case, this is their gymnasium uh, that, can, that, that opens up. Uh, the bleachers fold out. Uh, there's a lot of uh, ability for seating to happen you know, on the floor. Uh, this, so this folds, partition folds back and then the curtains are all right behind that, uh, uh, that partition. On the other side of this is another partition and then the stage. Uh, you can see over here on the left hand side, this is the, uh, this is an example of what, what a library could look like, um, you know, a media center, you know, with, some, with different types of seeing. This one is a little bit more of a traditional, um, you know, here's something that you're kind of getting a little outside the box with different types of ceiling, uh, ceiling options with, uh, you know, a little bit of round. I, I, I don't know about you, but I love elementary schools. There's so much opportunity for us to have fun to create really dynamic spaces, whether that's adding color in the furniture, you know, in the floors, you know, off, over here to the left-hand side, which you can see is a, an example of a, a collaborative learning lab where we took a tree, we turned it upside down. Uh, so what you can see here is the actual flooring itself uh, kind of mimics what, it, what a tree would look like. And this is just a vinyl flooring. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's the, the vinyl graphics on the walls, you know, show some socks going up. The column, you know, kind of mimics what a tree would look, um, you know, a tree. Uh, you know, different types of tables and chairs. Uh, you know, so the, uh, an elementary school really is an opportunity uh, to have a lot of fun and create spaces. This is a, a student's first example of what a school is supposed to be like. What is that learning environment that we want to we have for our students? Um, you know, can, it can be fun. And, and if you're having fun and you're learning at the same time, it's a win-win for everybody. You know, and, uh, um, you know, so, you know, you know, different types of ceilings, you know, we want to, you know, make sure that the spaces, these, these learning environments, whether it's a media center or a collaborative learning lab, have great acoustics in them. Uh, you know, so different types of cheating and chairs, lots of daylight. If you, that seems to be, you know, if you notice here, that's a theme um, that we're, uh, you know, that, that we try to encourage is, is making sure that these are, these are great environments, different types of seating, lots of daylight, you know, um, you know, for the, for the students. Uh, you know, those main comments that we talked about with, you know, the, uh, that not is it just a space for transportation, but putting opportunities in there for small groups to be able to get together, uh, whether that's pre-K all the way up through sixth grade, you know, cafeterias, making the spaces that, that uh, you know, students enjoy going into. Uh, they're looking forward to going to classroom every day because they're, they're, they're in a great building with great teachers, uh, you know, and, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's an a, a encouraging learning environment. Uh, so now moving into the high school, uh, so as I said, with this particular option, we're looking at a classroom addition uh, for seventh and eighth grade. Uh, so we'll be looking at said classrooms along with the toilet room. Uh, you know, with the capacity, we would be taking a handful of classes. Uh, you do have enough capacity at the high school uh, to turn a couple of the classrooms, um, you know, from a 912 into a 78. Uh, so we would be capturing, a, a, you know, just a, a couple of classes here. Uh, where we're locating this, this is currently a grass area. Uh, so this addition could happen without, uh, with, with, without really disrupting the educational program, um, and the uh, the renovations could happen during a summertime. Uh, instead, and we're trying to locate them so they're kind of in the middle, in between your your cafeteria, your gymnasium, your auditorium, your library space, um, and uh, you know, said so this would be for seventh and eighth grade. The second floor. 
Um, so before we move into option two, do we want to uh, talk a little bit? Is there any questions that anybody has on option one? And I'll try to answer them. Or do you want to move right into option number two? And then we can, um, uh, and then we can take a, a small break and talk about the talk about the options. Can you say we move on to the entire presentation? Can we go back and forth? Or I'll set aside that. But yeah, that'll be fine. Josh, let's get to go on with everything. And if we need, we'll ask the question. Okay, great. Thank okay. You. So um, so option number two, um, we're looking at just a little bit differently. Uh, so with, in this case, what we do is we would construct a new pre-K through eighth grade elementary middle school um, on, on possibly on the high school campus. Uh, so this, this would be pre-K, K, and then first grade all the way through eighth grade. Uh, what we have here is an opportunity to create a school within a school. Uh, so this could be a pre-K six building uh, with a uh, six, or, uh, sorry, pre-K through five building uh, with a six, seven, eight, um, you know, and we'll get into the design of that, of that in a minute. Uh, the, uh, we would look to close all three of your elementary schools, um, also the middle school. And in this case, we would not put an addition on the high school because all of the, um, uh, all pre-K through eight would all be in one new building. Uh, so the high school and the tech center would be looking at doing capital improvements over time as needed uh, with this option. Okay, uh, so this is a, in this option, we would again close close the middle school to Taro, Red Oak, Sturgeon, um, and Meharan Palatin Elementary Schools. Uh, we would look to construct this new pre-K-8 elementary middle school um, on BCS, BCPS owned property, uh, possibly at the high school campus. Uh, this would limit the renovations at the high school and the tech center. Uh, so again, from a construction phasing standpoint, we would look to construct the new building um, and then we would close the three elementary schools and the middle school, preferably at the end of the semester, uh, of a, end of a spring semester, uh, have all, ask all the teachers to be able to box up their stuff. Um, and then we would move everybody over the summertime and start in the new building um, in the fall of that, of that year. Uh, so that way when the students came back from the fall, everybody would be in the new building. Uh, we could also look to, you know, um, so pros and cons. Uh, this would consolidate all the buildings down to one campus, just like with option one, uh, reduce the buildings from, you still, this would still reduce the options from seven to three, just like option number one. Uh, so with construction phasing, uh, would limit the uh, amount of disruption because we're not renovating the, the buildings um, uh, during the school year um, or making any, any major changes. Uh, this would also, again, create a, later, uh, the, the final building would create a, a greater collaboration amongst all the teachers because all the teachers would be in one building for that grade, for that particular grade. Um, you know, larger classrooms, and we say larger classes, it's really larger classroom sizes. Uh, you know, one of the challenges that you have uh, with both your elementary and middle school um, is that the, the, the current classroom sizes, not the number of students, but the classroom sizes are kind of an older school model, you know, the 50s, 60s, and 70s model that's that's under, you know, in the six to 700 square foot range. Uh, now, most of the classrooms are designed in the, you know, uh, you know closer in the 800 to 900 square foot uh, per classroom. It gets, you know, students are larger. You know, the, the, the rounds, even elementary schools, all, uh, students are larger uh, than the, what they were in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, so, but you know, so with the creation of the collaboration spaces, there's more opportunity for students um, you know, to, uh, to have different types of learning, uh, uh, learning environments. Um, and if, if it, this is located at the high school campus, now pre-K through eight is going to have access to the athletic complex uh, for some of both elementary and the middle school students. Uh, so cons, you know, is that we are, we're again looking to close all three elementary schools um, and the middle school. Um, in this one, uh, we're, we're going to add the con of that the high school uh, would only receive capital improvements and not really any renovations uh, at the high school. Okay, so we're looking at cost. So we're closing three elementaries in the middle school. Uh, this new construction would be pre-K-8. Uh, we're now we're looking at a cost range of about 38 to $43 million uh, because we are adding, I said, the middle school wing. So this is a larger square foot uh, footprint. Uh, so we're closing the middle school at the high school, the, um, the tech center and the school board, uh, we're looking at capital improvements. And this option, we're still looking at a school board office as either an addition at the high school, um, or we are looking at a, a freestanding building. Um, as, as we've said that the, uh, if, we're, if we're looking at costs and trying to cost save, uh, that doing a freestanding building, uh, because of the construction site, we're actually going to save uh, save a few dollars by doing a freestanding uh, building that allows to kind of change the construction of it uh, to not have to match what's at the high school. Uh, so, um, 
you know, the, the total cost range, again, we're looking at a range, a range of, uh, for the total project cost for all buildings around 43 to $48 million. Uh, so when we're looking, I said, and what's important is that we wanna have, uh, you know, looking at both not only the construction costs, but also operation maintenance, utilities, transportation and staffing. I mean, <coughs> the, um, um, and, and this one, we're looking at the potential cost savings of about 1.3 million. Uh, it's the same as before, is that your cost savings is gonna be greater in the beginning. And then as the building ages, your costs um, will get closer to a wash. Um, we're looking at the, the cost savings. They're absolutely, with the, when we're looking at operation maintenance utilities, um, uh, you are absolutely going to see a cost savings with the new building. And so that's everything from energy efficiency to general maintenance, just simply even looking at <coughs> Uh, looking at your, your light fixtures. Uh, so right now in your buildings, you have T12s, you have T8s, they're, they're the fluorescent lights. Um, you constantly, your, 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 your maintenance and custodial staff are constantly changing light bulbs. Um, they're expensive, they're getting harder and harder to find. Um, and they're also an energy drain. Simply by going to LED fixtures, uh, the LED fixtures last, they're, what they're not projecting is anywhere from 20 to 25 years. So just imagine, your maintenance staff and your custodial staff not having to change a light bulb for 20 to 25 years of time. Just think about how much they can, they can now focus the resources on, on other tasks. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, and also teachers not, not having the, you know, lights being out in their classrooms all the time. Uh, what's also fantastic about LED lights is they're all dimmable. You know, they're easier to control. Uh, so they're not, so, and you're also looking at a, a significant savings in your utility bills going from, you know, so that the, the fluorescent lights to LEDs. So, so looking just operation mains and utilities, uh, you are absolutely going to see a cost savings with either option one or option two. Uh, with this option, it's going to be just a little bit more, um, you know, in, in the cost savings as we're, as we're projecting. Okay, uh, so this concept looks about the same, you know, uh, from a site's perspective, this is, is that we would have a, a, a center core going to, to the main entrance, a car drop off and a bus drop off. Uh, so we could have areas of parking, you know, on both sides of the building, uh, along with playground area for pre-K and K, um, and um, in the you know, in the and three through five, or, I'm sorry, and one through five, uh, we can have areas for uh, for athletics. Uh, what's just a little bit different here is that uh, because we we could look at the option of having a school within a school, uh, where everybody may enter at the same point. You also have the option of having a six, seven, eight, um, you know, admin entrance. You know that could be separate um, if 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 selected. You can also have um, a uh, assistant principal or a different principal just for the middle school, and we'll get to that in a minute. The big difference between the the uh, design, you know, of the, uh, the concept design of the site is that we have a separate parking area just for the middle school, if it's desired by BCPS to put um, uh, to have its own administration and its own entrance for the middle school. Um, so uh, when we're looking at the, at the concept, um, and this is just a, uh, is that, you know, you're still looking at the entrance um, and you're looking at pre-K and K, you know, your administrative area. Um, in this case, we'd have said one, two. Um, mm -hmm. Well, it's showing three and four, really because this would be your middle school wing, this would actually be sixth grade and seventh grade would be in this because this would be your middle school. Uh, this would be your middle school concept right here. Um, and, uh, I think I might be showing the wrong, uh, an older presentation. Uh, so this is your, you said your gymnasium, you know, with your pull-out bleachers. Uh, this is your shared stage um, and your cafeteria, um, along with your uh, with your kitchen. And I said, if if desired for the middle school, you could have this as your administrative suite, you know, for the middle school with its own separate entrance if desired. Um, so on the second floor, I said this, this could be third grade and fourth grade. Um, with the middle school, we'd be looking at eighth grade on the second floor, and then what we would have is, is science, um, you know, technology labs, art labs. Uh, part of what we want to try to do is we want to try to get as many of the core specials as possible, um, or even your core classrooms, in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade area. So really, the only spaces that would be shared with sixth, seventh, and eighth grade would be your gymnasium and your cafeteria. Um, you know, if possible, all of your spaces you know, for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade could be within this wing. Uh, we still have your learning, uh, uh, your learning lab. And in this concept, we would have a second floor above, above your, above your kitchen. Um, so uh, just a couple of
little images again of, you know, what, you know, now let's think a little bit about what the exterior of the building could be. Um, you know, so, so here we're showing some images, um, you know, the, what's really great about a new building is that uh, it allows us to have um, a lot of flexibility on what that new identity of that school could be. You know, so it could be a, a more modern look with flat roofs. You know, it could it could have you know it could have uh, um, uh, you know uh, sloping roofs and be a more of a, a traditional school um, you know look. You know, different types of fixtures. It could be it could be brick. It could be block. Uh, it could have metal panel lines. Uh, you know, we really have a lot of flexibility with you know with a uh, a new school uh, to create that new identity. You can you know with an elementary, we can start to add color. You know, and have and have uh, you know different color block with the. Uh, um, uh, you know, a red and, and blue block. Uh, you can go really more of a modern look, you know, with, you know, with the concept. Um, you know, said so those learning commons, which we talked a little bit about, um, you know, different types of, of common areas that, you know, whether, whether it's quiet space or a space just inside of the quarter to have tables and chairs. Uh, what's important is that these are created in nooks so that way these spaces um, can, uh, um, you know, can be developed, uh, you know, that they're not, uh, uh, inhibiting emergency egress access. So these tables and chairs are in the quarters and you can have breakout space, uh, but you're not necessarily having, you know, um, uh, you know, as part of your egress. Okay, just more, more ideas of different types of common area, you know, collaborative lab space that we can develop. You know, media center space, library space, you know, front entry. Okay, just give me one second here. I want to, this is actually an older, oh no, it's not, okay. Um, so that was, uh, that is the two options for, um, uh, for the elementary school. Uh, so we're looking at said, either a pre-K six uh, new building or a pre-K and, uh, or pre-K eight building. I said, both of those options could be located at the high school, um, at the high school campus. And we'll show a couple options uh, of where those sites could be. Um, if, uh, if, if uh, we desire, we can actually move into and talk a little bit about the athletic stadium options um, and then uh, kind of, uh, you know, come back right to the, um, uh, to the elementary. Actually, you know what, let's do this. Let's talk about the, um, the options for where the, um, the pre-K-6 or pre-K-8 elementary school site could go. Uh, so this is your high school campus. Uh, this is your high school here. You can see, let me, let me open up the, uh... okay. Uh, so this is your high school, um, and here's your tech center, uh, the tech center parking lot. Um, the, uh, this is your uh, bus garage and your water tower. Uh, and, and you may not know this, uh, but the uh, school division owns property across the street. Uh, there's actually a large parcel of, of, of acreage that's across the street. Uh, and this is your current uh, athletic stadium right here. Uh, so this could be one option. Uh, is to uh, is to take the area that is located across uh, across the way um, and develop the elementary school here with your parking, uh, your bus car and bus drop off, uh, your playground area. Uh, so this is uh, the acreage here is is large enough. Uh, what's interesting about this site is that there is uh, kind of a um, a crown in the middle of the site, and what we would propose um, in looking at this is actually to work with the site. Uh, so in in the case of this design. Um, is that as the classroom wings would come out, instead of having a, um, you know, your main commons and your first floor and then going up to a second floor, what we want to do is actually work with the contours of the site and actually drop the wing down. Uh, so in order to go to the, uh, uh, to go to the second floor or the, the second level of this, you would actually go down a level here, here, and here, working with the grade of the site and not spending um, um, unneeded dollars to regrade the entire site for this. Um, so we'd be looking, you know, we'll talk in a minute here about the athletic stadium options, but here's where athletic stadium could go um, on your current site. Uh, your bus garage um, could be located at another site, possibly the Totero Elementary site or the middle school. Um, and we could put the, the, the baseball here. And so we'll get to, get to the athletics in, in, a, in a minute. Um, um, another site option uh, for the elementary uh, could be to actually locate the elementary on, um, on the bus garage site. Uh, so this site, uh, is also large enough. Uh, we would kind of work around um, around the water tower um, and may possibly have shared parking with the tech center or develop a new tech center parking area. Uh, what's, what's nice about this site is it's a little bit flatter. 
so the contours of this is actually comes out. You can see the red line here of how far the, uh, the division property goes. Uh, so I so said with, with both of these options, they are large enough to, uh, to put playground area, to have the elementary, whether it's a pre-K six or pre-K eight, um, a, a clear separation of the car and bus drop off along with parking. Um, and in both of these options, we do have the space for the athletic stadium to be located um, at the high school site and not located off site somewhere else. Uh, so those are the two options for, uh, to put the elementary at the high school site. Uh, we did want to show one additional option, uh, which is locating the, um, the pre-K-6 or pre-K-8 elementary um, at Taro Elementary site, in which case uh, this would happen, this would be constructed behind Totoro Elementary. Uh, we would construct the building. Uh, the elementary school, school would remain an option. You can actually see the red line right here of where Totoro is. Uh, once the new elementary school was up and operational, uh, we would demolish the existing building. Um, and then we would construct the new parking areas um, and bus drop off um, in the summer prior to this to the school being operational. Uh, but this would allow us to again to limit the amount of dis, uh, disruption. Um, you know, some pros and cons of this site is that uh, the site is large enough as a pro. Uh, a con is that it would be behind the middle school, uh, so you know this would be a closed middle school. Uh, so the purpose of this building you know, is, uh, uh, you know, what, what does this building become um, and how can we uh, properly address this so that the aesthetics of this building is complementary to what your new, uh, what your new school could be behind that. Um, so those are kind of the, just three options that we've been looking at um, as far as where, where could a new school go? Uh, you know, obviously with the high school campus, everybody's on one campus, that's definitely a positive. Um, and, and you do have the acreage there to make that happen. Um, at this site, I said you, um, uh, this would allow you to have a little more freedom at the high school for athletics um, and located at this campus. Um, you know, so there are definitely pros and cons for each one of the sites. Okay, so um, unless um, anybody has a desire to, uh, to talk about the elementaries um, and further, we can go and talk about the athletic stadium and then just open it up to general questions and we can go back to any point in the, um, in the presentation if desired. What would that like to do, Josh? Let's go get Okay, great. Um, so Athletic Stadium, uh, we really have a great opportunity here to develop um, a, a fantastic athletic stadium. We've done a, a number of stadiums all throughout the, uh, the Mid-Atlantic. Uh, this particular stadium here, uh, we had to do on a, on a very, very tight budget. Uh, they, uh, the school division that we're working with, um, you know, asked us and said, look, can we eliminate the amount of impervious coverage? Uh, what can we do to be to kind of think outside of the box? Um, and what we're trying to do with your options, with both of the options, is really try to think outside of the box, uh, give you guys a, a beautiful brand new stadium, um, and try to keep our costs down. Uh, so with this particular stadium, what we did was we uh, put all of the concessions and the toilet rooms and the team rooms underneath of the bleachers, as opposed to its own separate building, um, and its own separate construction. Um, you can actually kind of see an image right here that, you know, so the, the spectators can come down, you know, and then walk around the back um, and, and utilize the, boy, you know, the men's and women's toilet room. They can have concessions. Uh, so the, the boys and girls team rooms, you know, for athletic events at the stadium are all located within the building underneath the bleachers. That allowed us to save dollars on the bleacher costs because essentially we built the construction of the building and set the bleachers on top of it. Um, it also allows the bleachers to be elevated uh, so your line of sight view um, is, is a bit more dynamic. You're now over top of the players. If you've, if you've gone to a stadium um, and the bleachers are, are down lower, you know, and, and the football and the soccer players are all out there, um, you know, people are walking around. It really does inhibit your, your ability to view. So um, by, by raising them up, um, you can also bring them a little bit closer and, and makes it more of an intimate environment um, and, and gives it a fantastic view to the field of play. Um, and so, uh, so let's talk about a couple of options. Um, so, so option A uh, is looking at the construction of a of a of a new um, of a new stadium um, on your current site. Uh, so your your current uh, 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 football field and track is located running perpendicular. So just to the south of here is your high school, um, and I said your current uh, the, the current stadium is actually running uh, flat. You know, going horizontally. Uh, for best, um, best play, um, whether that's football or soccer or field hockey, uh, you really want to kind of have a north-south orientation. So what we're doing is we're actually showing it flipping um, 90 degrees. And, uh, and so now the, the stadium would be located at, at this direction. We're showing in this concept with 
the uh, the same thing where the the concessions, the the toilet rooms, the team rooms, everything is actually located underneath of the bleachers. You know, both on the home and on the visitor side. Uh, this does have an eight lane track. You know, so that way you can host uh, you can host uh, 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 regional events. You know, at this facility, um, along with synthetic grass. You know, for the the field of play. Um, you know, and one of the things that, that, that would be talked about during design is what, what types of events do you want to play here? Do you want to have uh, football, soccer, um, you know, both boys and girls soccer? Uh, do you want to have lacrosse, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, what, what, you know, field hockey? And the lines would be, you know, the field would be designed and striped appropriately for that. Uh, you can also do temporary striping, you know, on the field. So that way you don't have all these different colors and all these different lines, you know, that become distractive um, on the site. We would also uh, put softball, uh, so that would be a, um, uh, and then also replacing uh, your tennis courts with new tennis courts. Uh, so you know the the con and then the baseball. If you recall, just a few a few minutes ago, we were showing the baseball either over across the street um, would be a new baseball stadium, um, or it could be located at your at your bus garage. Uh, so we're looking at what would be part of this uh, would be new bleachers or press box uh, seating for about two thousand uh, spectators. And that is in the bleachers itself, not looking at the people who also are going to be standing in your players, um, you know, toilet rooms and concessions. Uh, so this would be a synthetic grass field for, uh, for your st athletic stadium, uh, stadium lighting. You're going to have fencing, your six lane, all weather track, scoreboard, uh, tennis courts, a new baseball and softball field with natural grass. Um, you know, we're looking at a cost range for this concept of about 7.3 to $8.8 .8 million for, uh, for everything, for all of the athletics, uh, so that means that all of your athletic fields would be new um, in this concept. Okay. Um, option B looks at the looks at this just a little bit differently, um, and that in this concept we were looking we'd be looking at multiple um, synthetic fields. Uh, so this uh, so what we uh, so we kind of do things flipping it around a little bit. Uh, so let's talk about the stadium first. So you come in, you'd have new ticket booths just like you would in option A, uh, new ticket booths. Uh, coming in, the gray areas we're showing here would be your walking surface. Uh, in this case, we would have 2,500 uh, bleachers, and that would be for both the main stadium, um, and the, the counter bleachers, and also your secondary. Um, you know, we were looking at toilets and concessions uh, for, for your entire athletic complex. Uh, we've been looking at not one, but two synthetic grass fields. Uh, so this would be one field. Um, and on this field would be designed for a uh, football, for soccer, um, but it would also be designed for softball. So you can see the softball diamond is right here. Uh, so as you're looking at the, this concept that the, the entire softball field would be synthetic grass. Um, and then we'd have bleacher seating set for both home and away, you know, with the concessions and toilet rooms underneath those bleachers. And then we'd be looking at a second synthetic grass field um, and this would have, uh, you know, not only could you use this for practice for uh, football, soccer, uh, but also for baseball. Okay, so you can see the actual line here for baseball, um, and then also your your bleacher seating. So, so the goal in this concept um, is a little bit more expensive because you'd have two synthetic grass fields, um, but all of your athletics would be on on one site. Um, you know, baseball, softball, soccer, football, uh, field hockey. Um, and uh, it would be a little bit larger of a complex on this one on this one site. Uh, so looking at this, you know, el and also tennis courts and the tennis courts would be across the street. Uh, so the probable cost range for this concept would be roughly 8.2 to 9.9 .9 million dollars. Is that the option B is more expensive because you have more synthetic grass area in this concept, you know. Uh, so it is going to drop the cost for not only the turf, but then also for all the stormwater um, under, you know, and all your uh, trenching and under drains for uh, for this concept. Uh, this also would as it have a um, eight lane running track, you know, your walkway fencing, your stadium lighting, um, and your synthetic grass. Uh, so what we're trying to do is to try to think a little bit outside of the box with this option. Uh, there is a little bit more of a premium and, uh, um, you know, the, uh, uh, but this would give you multiple, multiple synthetic grass fields for both practice and for, uh, and for game time. So, uh, so I believe that is it for, um, uh, for the presentation. Um, so we're happy to answer any questions and hopefully, um, you know, I can hear any questions that you're, that you're asking. And uh, we can go back to any slide, and, and we're here as long as you need, as far as uh, you know, to, for discussion. Uh, I guess I'll start with saying you can definitely see the difference of where we were when we left here about a year ago and our prices. And 
I'm just going to say I'm really excited about some of the documents. Some of the documents really, really exciting. I'm not going to say what the other But yes, um, I will ask before we even start Dr. Jeff, anything you'd like to say before we kind of open up the question? No, sir. Other than on the last slide, Dr. that. Talk about schedule. Um, just that the timeline is there, so we talk to see and you see. There's been a new one here prior to that, but I just um, added to the part of the process as well. But we'll see where we have the very few communities that are coming up. Um, that there are schools will arrive here as well. First, we talk to some of the magazines that we can see at the comment. Um, and uh, Josh is here tonight to work on a survey that will be talked to us about the future tomorrow prior to the video uh, resolution. Um, but essentially, just to still give you a rundown of our timeline so that we can get there. That's all. Board, um, any questions or any statements? No, we can go to. Around the room, if anybody has any questions or comments, that's the right thing. Well, I don't have a question. I just spoke to all the other person. I just do 600 meters. I want you to ask that. I'm taking the ground. Josh, six lanes and eight lane track. They would both be an eight lane track. Both both of the of the options are an eight lane track. Thank you. How is the how is the motion down on the street from the work position? Looking at it, are you going to have multiple engineers connected? To just the motion down on the buses and the accident? It looks kind of high. Josh. Yes. The question is unloading and loading buses or kind of putting all our students in one spot. That, how is that? Is it multiple unloading or loading, or what have we got there? Great question. So, you know, with the pre-K six option, what we would do is we would do um, so in the morning when the when the buses drop off, they typically drop off when the onesies and twosies. You know, uh, that would be in the in the bus drop off effort. Let me go back to the. Uh, oh, actually, let me just go back here. Um, so that would be in the. Um, in the bus drop off area. So, so the buses in the mornings would come up and they would drive along and they would they would just park alongside the sidewalk and you know and students would offload in the morning. Um, in the afternoon, uh, what we would have is we would have Chevron style parking where the buses would kind of park at an angle. So the buses would come in and they would park at an angle running down and the students would come in, you know, would come out of the building, load onto the buses, and then once all the students are loaded, then the buses would come out and then be able to exit out. Uh, that's kind of the the how we do it as a standard. Uh, we found the Chevron style parking, which is you know it's uh, the so the long it's kind of an angle parking. What's nice about it is that when that you know once that first bus goes, they all just have to turn left and be able to exit out of the site. Uh, so so this is a concept. You know once we actually you know move you know if when and if we move into a design, that what we would do is we would have you know the actual number of buses. We would show what that what that layout looks like, um, and that would be. Now, it, with the pre-K-8 option, we also have the ability that if, if there was a desire, um, so example, if um, the, the six, seven, eight students were not riding on the same bus, you know, so if, if we have a pre-K-5 uh, bus route and then we had a uh, six through 12 bus route, however, however we end up doing this, um, is that we could have either the at the middle school, you know, we could, all the, we could do the same thing where the buses drop off in the front of the building and the students come in or you know, we also talked about the ability to have the parking and the bus drop off in the rear to where the buses for the 678 could be dropping off and entering in the backside. Uh, that is something that we would we would entertain once, you know, once and if the, the design moves forward, you know, if it's a pre-K-8 option. So we can either have a combined, you know, one bus area or have two bus areas with that second, with that, uh, with option number two. Um, but the, uh, um, so hopefully I answered your question. Okay, what about, uh... Jim, you can mark him. You can ask him. That way, I don't have to answer. It would be a direct question. Okay. 
Yes, on the uh, on the on it, it, it relates to the parking. Uh, you don't have covered uh, walkways, you know, to deal with the rainy days, bad weather days, the students, you know, getting on and off the bus so they don't have to run around in the rain. Yes, great question. I think the answer is yes. So, so in in the design, we would have. Um, a walkway for both the car and the drop off, you know, so car drop off would have a, a covered walkway to get from that from that drop off area to the entrance and the same thing with the with the bus drop off area. So that would be part of the design is to make sure there's at least a canopy uh, so that we, when the students are offloading that they're and it is it is an adverse weather uh, that they're they're not getting wet. Um, so yes, that would absolutely be part of the design. Thank you. Uh, when we're closing the middle school, the middle school is real. Do you have a plan in place as far as um, if, if the cost considered as to what it's going to cost? If, if we think about the capital's plan as we close those three elementaries, have we thought about cost them all with them? Is there not any cost involved? Can we come and say as these bus right? No, we didn't have those buildings are closed and we, we're still in the up, you know, and then we're moving out of there. Because is there a plan for those the three elementaries in middle school? As well as is there any cost associated we really have not we talked about may have used one of them for a bus ride possibly but probably turn it down and back over to turn it back over to town this is something that i, that I thought about and i'm going to go come up and the only other question i had was on the eighth through eight the gym looks like it's the same as the elementary um gym is there any, any consideration as far as middle school sports, I would have used the old gym here. Have they, with that gym, ever big enough for middle school to be able to play basketball? Did you catch that? Because I'm going to see one side of the music, so we're running the same problem we had at the middle school, unless there's something I'm not seeing. That's what I have. So, you're saying that you can charge it's not a regulation court? Right, just making sure that, you know, sometimes elementary. Yes, thank you. So yes, the uh, what we're showing is actually it's going to be an oversized gym. So it would be a full court. And let me go back and I, uh, let me show you in the, in the actual image will be a little bit better. Um, so it's a full basketball court plus room for about 250 seats. And again, this is only the concept, um, but room for 250 seats in the bleachers themselves. So uh, so with this concept, you know, this is a full basketball court here, um, and then bleacher seating for about about 200 to 250 in in the seats. Uh, this can also, you know, this can also expand a little bit if desired. Uh, we would recommend that this is a um, a, a wood a wood floor. Uh, when these bleachers are folded back, uh, there's actually two basketball courts. Okay, so if you can see here from this line, that's one basketball court, and then two. So from a a, a everyday uh, phys ed standpoint, you actually have two different courts of play. Uh, if you wanted to have, uh, you know, middle school actual events, you know, where they were spectator events uh, or elementary spectator events that the bleachers could fold out and this would be a full court. Uh, the other part of, with both of the concepts is that we would, we would recommend developing the cafeteria, you know, with a rubberized surface uh, that could be not only utilized for, for dining, um, but also for phys ed space and also for teaching space. Uh, so there's some really great uh, uh, rubberized floors uh, that, um, uh, because when you look at elementary, uh, it is more often about movement than it is about court sports. Uh, so this space could also, is, is, is really going to be, you know, another fantastic space for, especially for the younger pre-K, K-1 uh, students to have phys ed type of class in here, um, you know, because all of these tables and chairs uh, have the ability to be stored away uh, when they're not in use as a cafeteria. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we are you know, looking at, you said, not only, you know, you know, middle school, but then also elementary, you know, types of phys ed and having safe facilities outside. Uh, so that way, when, they, when, when the weather's nice, that they can also have phys ed outside. So that's all I was going to have a question. Yeah, so it sounds like it's going to be a 250 seat uh, gym for middle school basketball. Uh, that was my only concern, just thinking about what we can do with them over at the middle school, making sure that parents have sufficient, sufficient seating for the games because sometimes the high school and those two games are the same night. And so can we get enough parents in the room get enough parents in that gym for home basketball game? That's my yeah. only concern. Yeah, I, I think I, I thought a little bit about what you say, maybe not in basketball, 
but I guess like you used to play baseball. So you've got baseball and you've got softball. I guess it's going to have to be some coordination, and I do definitely agree with that on how to get practice out and stuff like that. But I guess to look, let's look at the bright side, being less fields, maybe we can have nicer fields, you know, versus two or three fields. Right now, I'm looking at there will be some coordination. Right, I mean, I'm not opposed to that at all. I just wonder that there's much of it. You go through all the time, there's a scheduling in, and we're going to see what we take to see how all these kids come through here playing multiple, at multiple levels. It's just that some nights you're running to a conflict, but it's going to be a real middle school team at 8 through 8. You got to think about being able to hold those games. This is something that does anybody want to talk to me? How difficult would it be to increase the capacity of the season for the middle I'm sorry, Mr. Craig, could you say that one more time? I Good job. How difficult would it be to increase the capacity of the season for the long for the general? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I still didn't hear it. How difficult would it be to increase the seating capacity for the gym? Oh, great, thank you. That, that, that got, I got you that time. Uh, so it would just simply be a matter of, of sliding this wall out. Um, you know, it, uh, so if there was a certain desire as far as the number of seats, if we wanted to feet 500, you know, we would simply just slide this wall out um, and that would allow us to have a, a larger amount of bleachers, you know, in the gym. Um, you know, another thing that we could look at, which is actually what we did at Augusta, uh, was we rotated the entire gym 90 degrees uh, so that way the bleachers also face the stage, you know, so that if you want to try to maximize your amount of seating for the stage, you know, is that uh, uh, the bleacher seating, you know, so that you could have bleacher seating plus floor seating all facing, all facing towards the stage. But right, if you want to, if we wanted to increase the seating, it's simply just to be a matter of sliding this wall out and it would also make your gymnasium larger uh, when the bleachers are folded back, you know, in a, um, uh, in a collapsed position. You still the uh, price range as well. I I don't know I offhand what the price range would be. Um, it would um, you know it could be anywhere from you know because there'd be two costs. One would be the building cost, um, you know HVAC walls, uh, flooring, but and then also the bleachers themselves. It it, it might add another. Um, you know, two to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the cost of the project, but I, because we have a cost range, I'm not necessarily going to say that it's going to add more than what we're already proposing. You know, we may be able to make that improvement without going above our, our current threshold. I, I'd, I'd have to do a little bit of work on that. Just curious, I don't know Question. I don't know, but I know it's not big enough. No, it's not enough. That's all I'm talking about. That's possible. You know, you're where we're going with that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all for this. Of course, I appreciate it. And, and one thing that is important I do want to point out is that this, this design is in both of the options. So even in the elementary school, and, and um, uh, and you're correct, is that it is often that there's no bleacher seating, you know, and thought about spectators, you know, in an elementary school. Uh, so both of the concepts have the gymnasium, the full gymnasium with the bleacher seating for pullout. Uh, that, we, uh, the, that we felt that is important, you know, to have the bleacher seating as a, as a parent, um, you know, not, not only as an architect, but also as a parent, uh, we find that that lacking, you know, is that the, the gym is barely just big enough, either it's not quite a full court, you know, or it's, you know, there's just enough room there to be able to have the court play, but you're standing really close up to the wall because there's not a thought about how spectators can view that. So, um, so we were, we were incorporating this into both of the, both of the option one and two, uh, with the full court and the, and the bleacher pullout seating. Okay. Is there any plan beyond the bleacher seating for one location? Very positive. It looks really nice. I kind of like, you know, I want to get everybody's feet out here. I think those will be, and I'll just get to me all that rusty little bit. That's just awesome to think about, you know, everything in one location. I just think going forward, the future of town, I just think that's the way town is. 
I had another question in, in that relationship. You know, we're looking at one of the options is to put the bus garage at the terror after that's abandoned. But, you know, we've been going through some of that stuff that I have the bus now. Really, your buses need to be for your school zone. You, you know, rather than having truck across town to get service and fuel and all this stuff, it, it, it can be worked in with part of the campus off on the side of it or something. Because then that also gives you the opportunity with that vacated space over there to do something when you're not dealing with a bus for large city on part of the property. Yeah. So what we're what we're looking at again, this is a projection because we, without an actual design, we don't know the exact utility costs or, or the projected actual costs because we're still kind of just doing this as a study. Uh, so what you know what our projections are showing is that the cost savings would be this would be the the highest at year one, year two, year three, and then so these the savings would start to slowly decrease over time. Um, you know, the biggest things when you're looking at just, just mathematically is that when you're looking at all of your utility costs that you have for your elementary schools and your middle school, they are very high when you're looking at a cost per square foot basis. Um, the buildings, while you guys have done a fantastic job maintaining them, are really not as energy efficient as, as they could be. Uh, so also the systems aren't as new. Uh, so with new systems and more energy efficient building, consolidating into one into one location, um, it really will help, you know, significantly to save dollars on day one um, you know, when you're looking at your options. Uh, I have an estimate, but I, I guess the question was, David, you can't, are, are you saying that, that it would be higher in year one than what you're showing, or you're saying on year one, it would, that's your rough estimate? Year one. Year, year one, this is going to be our rough estimate of what it is. As, as we as develop it further, we'll have better numbers, um, but this would be year one, and then year two may be, you know, just a tiny bit less, and then year three maybe a tiny bit less. Um, you know, as you're getting year ten, you know, and the you know building starts to age like they all do, um, your savings is going to start to drop. You know, drop even further. And year twenty will drop even further. Um, but you're, but there's really little doubt in our mind that there is there's absolutely going to be cost savings when you're simply just looking at the um, operations of made to utilities. The other thing that's important is when you're looking at the square footage and you start to add up all of the buildings, you know, that the consolidated school is actually less square footage than all of your buildings, you know, than, than combining your all three elementary schools and middle schools. So purely just on a on a um, area basis by having the consolidated area is going to be a savings. And, I, and hopefully I'm, I'm explaining this a little bit better this time. Um, let, me, uh, let me ask you one more boss question. And the reason I mean, just want to get real, go out on Facebook and I hear there's all kinds of stuff. So, um, interest rates, 
uh, this is very sensitive to interest rates, and I noticed, I don't guess it's your firm, maybe it's Davenport or whoever. Five percent just seems through the roof. I, I had an employee who's got a two and a half percent fix. Um, we had an initial thing for the town, uh, a sewer project, we got a 40 year 1.79 percent. That, that translate, would translate to about a million and a half dollars less in debt service, um, which would make a, a big, you know, a big difference in the calculations. And, um, you know, the numbers have been shown or put out there show that, you know, the whole thing had 16 and a half cents, I think it was, to the, to the um, uh, tax rate, real estate tax rate. And, I said, I think, uh, but that thing was based totally on debt service at 5% with no savings capital, no savings consolidation savings shown at all. So, you know, I think the, the number is, you know, way, way, way overstated for what we're doing. I think having said all that, I mean, I think we so desperately need this project. I mean, we have got to do something with our schools. My wife was on the school board 20 years ago and we were talking about new school too. I mean, I just absolutely, um, and even when you're talking about economic development, number one way we talk about our schools. And this can bring some excitement. The athletic, I have to add the athletic complex to that too. I mean, I think they're just really, really important. I mean, I'm totally personally supportive of, of, of the project. I just, for thought, but you know, looking at the community as a whole, I, I just ask those tax. But I, I don't know if you are seeing like certain bond rent or certain rates, interest rates, or whatever, at this time, and whether y'all deal with that. Um, I, I really can't speak a whole lot to um, anything on the um, on the financing standpoint. I'm just an architect, um, so the um, you know I. As far as, as rates go, you know, the only thing that I can really help speak to is what we're seeing as far as construction costs go. Um, and, you know, what were, you know, the challenges between getting materials and, um, uh, you know, whether, whether that's steel, uh, resin, um, or the, the, the challenges that we're seeing right now in the industry with the lack of, um, uh, of qualified uh, uh, contractors, subcontractors um, to be able to do the work. Um, but as far as um, I can't really speak a whole lot when in regards to anything on the um, on the finance side, uh, that that's really some it's somebody else somebody else's group. Yeah, that would be a problem with more more supervisors. Y'all be y'all for that. Y'all be more Relative to the interest rate, that will be part of our analysis working with that before. I can assure you that based on past experience, a 5% interest rate is really high. We will either work with BRA, we will go through the bond market to try to get the lowest interest rate that we can. But typically, 5% is really, really high. Um, I was in a conversation yesterday with Bay Cove, and I shared with them that we're in the process of talking about the construction of a new school. So I will also be having further conversations and dialogues with them to determine how we get low interest rate, what are some other options for funding of the project. Is there any possibility of infrastructure, you know, the development of infrastructure thing? Is there, is there any possibility of anything like that as well? We will consider all of the options. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And what we do is shop the market to okay. get the best rate. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's very much. We should have a lot of other questions to you, man. Before you end up in our history. So that's just that question that my comment is. Um, I'm going to defer, I'm going to answer this board's question. I'm going to defer about the just expertise for this as a um, city. I think the option one would also. All one site, you all doing a great job. Uh, some people think that you know, it's not just a lot, you know, look at it as it's necessary. We need it for the next 50 years moving forward. Um, we really go on the fact today that it's just simply the regular interest rate. 
radios and football and wrestling and family meeting and concessions. And so I'm definitely not going to support that. I like the option. I'm going to support both options, but I really just think the game for six is very friendly. Of course, you all have a school board, so you all have to decide that. But I just want to say, like, I'll have a great job. I like the pick and six option. Just here, you two options on the model. I'm sorry, sir. The two different options on the model. I can't hear you. Did you comment on that? Did I, did I comment on what now? The ball, the field. On the ball fields? Yes, so I just think that the cake, when you reach the seventh and eighth grade into the high school, you might run into some issues as far as your, your sports as you go through. There may be some other things that you run into, but the cake from the sixth is just plenty the best. If I'm not mistaken, all the teachers are licensed the same, everything is good, we're all in the same building. Um, as far as the ball goes, we're going to have to decide what you all can fit there. We already have some that we're not going to have to just totally discard as well. Same thing is with the gym that's here, and, and we currently have in the older portion of the building. You know, so renovations to that would be to me to be suitable for middle school basketball. And we all grew up in the golf game, and so it worked for us to be. Yes, sir. Uh, so there's a um, that the middle school, um, the gym is completely going to see about approximately 200 students now. Okay. But then if they have an assembly prepared for the gym, it's about 400. Thank you. Uh, I just want to make sure that. I appreciate that. So a basketball game basically will give you 220 because they'll tell you what they're lined up on the base today. Anybody who's in the school game, they'll be doing all of them. They'll do something that they don't. Good job. Thanks for that. 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 Thanks for that's not too far from the near field with the person who does that win. Um, but at the same time, I also look at option two. You have the vast majority of the students benefiting from what they're doing with the funds. So you have K through eight, and basically you have the 12th grade students who basically have access to this new model, as well as the tech center, um, whatever. So all the students are still directly benefiting. I'm saying with option two, we are reducing how much we're spending. Things to talk about doing this renovation with the high school, but um, most of the students are truly benefiting with option two options. I just want to say, too, um, I really believe that the same community has truly truly been even though we have a member of the year, has really been beneficial as we were working with some of the social communities. It's a conversation that we've had in various times that allows us to kind of uh, frame the options of what we want to offer for. Um, for the seniors, as well as how we can best serve the needs of the division. We even have the need to um, not to take the need of uh, for supervisors. And, you know, basically, what it takes to have those needs in the streets and how we can upgrade our field, our health, our health, to do those needs as well and bring that in and out and get people on the ground for the corner. So I think that all of these things into consideration with two and two of the pictures that we have. Or even better for our students and there's just opportunities for extending the growth, not just again, um, to get more students here, but also expanding our educational sets and programs as well. Positive comments? I love these positive comments. <laughs> um, it, it, I will say this when you get in a group like us, you know, everybody. We should find things that are wrong because we don't talk about it, we won't go back and fight it. But just what book of conversation, I hear so much positive. I just really like, you know, everything that was presented must be people for excited. I like that. Yeah, so it's like if you have some comments that may not be as positive, we let people go this way. The reason why because how much we we're in the institute community and they're probably doing about this a lot of questions. So this is an opportunity for us to kind of find out, ask questions, talk to Josh, and we feel like we work some options or whatever, especially if there's some things that are running on the line in our own mind that you feel that they may not be done. When we put those questions now, allow us to go back and talk about it, work out, and do something that will help you, such as, for instance, I'm not sure, ask questions about the city, ask it for the gym. Oh, that was a great question. So we do know that's an option that we're able to expand. Um, but I really need to make that opportunity. 
Right. So with the exterior, we're just simply not in that part of the process yet. Um, what's important is that we want to make sure that the, the character of the building um, is reflective of the community. So uh, as, as I was showing some images earlier, is do we want something that's more traditional, more modern? Do we want sloped roofs? Do we want a flat roof? What type of brick do we want to have on the building? Like there's going to be a lot of conversation that we that we are going to have with this, you know, uh, with the groups to talk about what is the identity of the building. Um, you know, we can show massing, uh, you know, of what, you know, if depending on the site, you, we can show early massing of what, how the building would sit on it and what the floors would look like. Um, but there's, there's kind of a, uh, we, and we want this to be a um, in-depth, um, engaging conversation. You know, talking about what does the you know, uh, you know what does the exterior of the building look like. Uh, this is a once-in-a-generation opportunity uh, for the community. We want to make sure that we're doing this right. Uh, so it, uh, we're we're just simply not yet there in the process as far as having it at designs of the exterior. Um, Saying we're going to be just a 
God, did you catch that question good? Just, I guess, a little bit of high school. What are the rooms that you, you know, we're going to do something to the restroom, the cafeteria, the individual rooms? Just kind of just a quick hit on what they are. Um, so on option one, uh, what we're uh, what we'd be doing is, oops, not let me go, um, would be to uh, focus on you know on creating the addition for the sixth for the seventh and eighth grade, um, and then we would be looking at limited renovations, um, you know, inside of the building, and that would be um, you know focusing on uh, some minor HVAC, lighting, um, interior finishes. Uh, with the dollars that we have available, uh, we're not looking at a comprehensive renovation. Uh, right in, in in the previous option, we were looking to do a comprehensive renovation of the remainder of the high school. So everything that wasn't done in two thousand four would be have a comprehensive renovation. Uh, with with this new option one, it's going to be limited renovations. Uh, we're going to try to stretch those dollars as far as possible. Uh, give the you know do some some limited set HVAC lighting, uh, some limited plumbing, uh, some energy efficiency pieces, um, and some interior finishes, uh, paint you know some flooring. Um, and, uh, and then, but the focus of the dollars is going to be on the addition to make sure that we can accommodate for enough program space for seventh and eighth grade. I'm glad that you that that's something that we can go to Dr. Rockwell as well as Dr. Rockwell. We chose that number to get the number that being a portion of the business. But we didn't know. So I appreciate the question. It's not what it is. It's not what it is. But I guess the main thing is, I would really get on some of the data. I guess that's the best thing I've ever done. I think the secret is that the funds are still in the government. There should be some additional funds that should be coming out because we have the CARES 2 money that um, that's coming out and then uh, CARES 3 money, the ESSERS money funds, that are, many of those funds can actually be used for um, facilities in terms of um, it's very specific HVAC, windows, door, and things like that. Um, but in addition, that there's some talk as we have our state meetings that there should be some additional funds that's not guaranteed that will um, come out, I guess I could ask this for at this point, um, that will come out that's going to focus specifically on facilities. So there's some talk to shift some money that way because there's several school divisions across the state that are in this very division that deal with facilities. Yeah, thank you. Yes. I would like to ask a question uh, concerning the uh, renovation and the upgrade and making sure that we meet the whole child, all our children within the school system with any sports or any academic or any uh, thing to help them to succeed in life in Brunswick County and abroad. And I just want to know that uh, and option one or option two were the, I know I brought it up in uh, when we first, the second facility meeting we had to make sure that she is, uh, that want to be part of the swimming team or part of uh, swimming, because our kids are liking those things that other areas may have, and I know other areas in other states have, that we have not touched on it and I have been serving on this facility committee. I know when we, when we renovated this school, 
I was serving on, and I bought it up. And uh, I think it's time that we're going to build a new facility that we need to have an indoor pool where our kids can participate in swimming and, and any anything that would build the child. And I know from experience with my children and my grandchildren that things that they are interested in, academic-wise, they do better because that's part of what they want to do and part of building really their character, building their academics because the coaches and everybody work with them to make sure that they are keeping their grades up and that they can't, don't do what they're supposed to do, they can't uh, participate in these sports. So I just want to make sure that this time when we step out with our facilities, that we try to meet all children in Brunswick County the things that they can be exposed to to make them better. So would that include you in the plan as we started out talking about it? Josh's so curiosity, how much would a, Mr. Curiosity, how much would a pool cost off the top of your head? Um, so uh, there's a lot of different pieces uh, to a pool. So, um, you know, a, uh, I'm actually doing an indoor pool right now for an aquatic facility and the, the, the pool itself um, is about, um, uh, is about uh, $3 million and the building around it um, is another three. So, so six, six to eight um, you know, depending on the, the, you know, seating, you know, um, you can, do, you know, if you're going to put, do a pool, having, having the ability for, uh, for bleachers, uh, locker room facilities, depending on if we can share them, um, you know, it's probably safe to say that we're looking somewhere in the, the six, seven, $8 million range, you know, for a pool. Um, but there's, there's a lot of factors. I, it's tough to answer that question only because there's a lot of factors. Do we have a movable bulkhead? Uh, you know, what type of, of structure do we have, you know, around the pool? Um, you know, is, is that, do we put locker facilities adjacent to it? Um, you know, it, uh, you know, is it, is, does it go from four foot to 10 foot or is it four foot to 12 foot? Uh, you know, is it Olympic size? Is it eight lanes? Is it six lanes? Uh, there's, there's, um, it, it's a, it's, I'm sorry, but it's a tough question to answer only because there's a lot of variables to a pool. Um, one thing I, I do want to say about a pool, yeah, yes, athletics is a great thing, but, but, uh, one of the things I, I love about this aquatic center that we're doing right now is that they are offering um, free swim lessons to all of the three school divisions that it supports. Um, and the school divisions are making swim lessons part of their curriculum for you to pass and move on out of sixth grade. So between pre-K and fifth grade, by the time you graduate fifth grade, you move into sixth grade, you have to have, be able to, um, to, to swim. And you know that is a fantastic life skills uh, skill for you to have uh, for somebody who's not a swimmer. Um, you know it uh, is it is something that is is something that I always think about. And if we can integrate that into elementary and also have that as an athletic option, you know for those students is, is fantastic. Um, but there's there's a lot there's a lot of things about a pool that can have a big swing in cost. Um, if we wanted to have it as, as part of any project, I'd be happy to kind of give you some options moving into the future of what that could possibly look like. So the, the school board uh, didn't look at anything dealing with the uh, swimming sports. Okay, because it was brought up, but that was one thing that was We didn't ask you to put the right Can I ask you a question? So when I look at the surrounding divisions, I don't see where we can have kind of competition swimming, but if you look at something where Josh was just talking about where the students were able to learn to swim and they were doing it for recreational, that what you asked before, they asked him about um, team level. No, because like in our county, you know, we've had issues with, we don't have certified uh, uh, guards to for a swimming program, and you know, we don't have anybody. Kids need to know how to do these things. And uh, 
and follow up learning process, you need to practice it the whole time. I said, I feel like if we didn't ask that, we felt like we needed to stop something. I think that's all I said. But I don't think we need to uh, chuck change our building. Because everything about the money. You know, if we want to talk to our children, we're going to have to pay for it. We're going to have to step up and make sure that, that we are trying to educate our kids in every direction and, and also try to, once they finish school, we will find them that some of them stay in the county and not all of them leave them. Option one, or oh, option two, it really does take away with some of the money, take away from some of the money that the high school will tend to get. So I'm in full support of option one. Um, and also just in full support of us giving our county something different, um, especially with our school system. But too many times I've said to individuals who wanted to bring people into our county to work. And they love the county, some of them because it is that one stop love, because it is so quaint and it's very too clear. But when they look at the fact that they take a ride around and see what our school system looks like, and not even to go into you know some of the struggles that we've had with accreditation, they just kind of back away from that. So I think if we're talking about bringing revenue in, if we're talking about bringing people in, if we're talking about bringing industry in, we need to start with our school system. And not to say that we're rebuilding or make anything different, but I think it will give our kids a sense of pride and give our community a sense of pride that this is where I go to work every day. I go to a place that looks good, smells good, and makes me feel good about coming in. I think we miss out on this opportunity because there is a lot of talk in the community about those not wanting to support it because of the taxes, in all honesty. You know, we're not a wealthy community, but at the same cost, we don't have a whole lot of industry. We don't have a lot of restaurants in here bringing that revenue in. So at some point, the community will have to put the bid. So we're hoping that it can be a point where, you know, it's, it's feasible to all of us. But let's keep our minds open. Um, we take the message out to the community. Let's please take it out to the community that this is a once in a generation opportunity. We need to make it work however we can make it work. And not to be frivolous in what we've been given um, or with the money, because we're definitely appreciative of them. We got to work with what we have or what we're asking for or what we've been um, uh, uh, allocated, but also to be good stewards of it, but to bring it, take that message back out into the community to say that this is something that we need. Because we have generations of kids that have been lost. Um, so we gotta get our system up to par. If we don't do it now, I've been to Dinwiddie and did it a tour there into that school system. It's beautiful. The collaborative learning spaces, the lights, the love, <laughs> it's all there. And we really need to have that for our communities. I would hate for us to, to see us start losing students because they decided to go to the next county or decide to go to Mecklenburg County because those school systems are bringing it up to par. And if we don't invest in our kids more, we don't need other money to work. So that's just what we're doing. I would guess, uh, for me, I don't think I'm really going to ask everybody whether they're being put in options or not. I'm not really going to look at it. We're looking to get back in the options. We still got to go. We got to bring in something that we thought what they were. Again, you know. Kind of here from the public and kind of went off. So there are things that we did in that program that we meant to us. So uh, I 
guess it was me, you know, I had to go, no, you're not. We can be back together. We don't have one minute to be back together with the parent and the We don't have right away. Um, You know, um, I know you have asked Josh to go back and look at the matches several times. I think we've narrowed down to two solid options when we look at the matches with the um, Bush Rock and Kansas Court. And as I think about what Mr. Miller has just stated, we look at West Texas. Now, if we build this option, if we build this new school, we look at this new school, what would set us apart from those who's not the network county, the way. Um, we need to come together. And then I think about the New York Pool. You know, and I'm not sure if it's workable, maybe not for competition, maybe not for the you know, reason needs, but it's feasible to look at how much it may cost to make a recreational New York Pool utilize the New York facilities and or um, as part of the athletic conferences. Thank you for I, I, I heard about the, the facilities. Your, your question was in regards to what it would take to just do an upgrade with your current facilities for the athletics. Is that what the question? No. I'm basically saying, I just want to kind of see how difficult would it be for us to work up an option or look at how we can include the indoor pool um, as part of our athletic complex and or um, as well as part of one of our current existing facilities and whatever, it still fits within the developed pool. I'm not sure if it's possible, but it's um, a way you can work it out. And you don't have to be a competition pool, but it's just right now as a recreational pool. We're looking at something that could possibly set us apart from those uh, surrounding counties. Right. Like this as well. And, and the two ways we could look at it for, from an economic standpoint is if we looked at it as part of the stadium. Um, can we actually have the locker rooms shared between the stadium and, and the pool is one way that we could look at it. Um, cause you're, 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 there's a premium cost to those, those locker facilities. Uh, another way to look at it is, is to, to see if we can combine them at the high school. Um, and again, try to share those facilities between your gym lockers, you know, your team lockers and the, um, and the, and the pool. Um, I'm more than happy to come up with, uh, with that as a, just kind of like we, we did, uh, you know, the, Elementary has, you know, kind of an option A and B that we have three site options, um, you know, same thing with the high school and then, um, you know, athletics, we can do the same thing with the pool and say, here's, here's what the pool could look like here. So here's option A and here's option B um, and, uh, and come back to you just, you know, all I need is a, a, cu a couple of these and we can, we can put together some options and also what, you know, what's the difference between a six and an eight lane pool? You know what's the difference between, uh, you know the the depths of the the, the different depths and and you know does it have a movable bulkhead? Uh, you know is does it a diving pole? You know where you can go twelve feet and you've got diving boards you can actually you know dive down in. Um, not only is it a life skill but it's also a great community aspect. Um, is that you know with the pool and clearly I'm fond of pools just in case anybody missed that. Uh, is that you know the other, the other really a positive part of pools if you have any type of diving programs it can be given with the with the, the fire department. Um, you know, if there's, if there's lakes, that there's also an opportunity for them to dive in a, in a conditioned environment. Uh, so there, there really are a lot of advantages to having a community pool. Um, you know, it's so not, you know, along with some, some lessons for kids and adults. Um, I, mean, I would be happy to come up with some additional options, just specifically looking at a pool that we can, that we can have for discussion. Um, Mr. Murray, two things I like what you just said, what you said, and what you said is one, even if it's not competition, because obviously we wouldn't be in competition in our district, but the kids could learn that life skill of swimming, life of dogging, things of that nature. Because other families like them would go to the lots of swimming lessons, come to the kids, do that indoors here. Um, but also, the kids talk about the, 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 the tank, like the state police, where you guys can do some type of training. You no, know, it's just all good thoughts. So I'm glad you all are considering and looking at it. It's, it's a good thought. I just want to ask a clarifying question so I know we're going with Josh. So, 
Josh, when you're saying this, you're gonna you're not gonna change like the elementary options, like the option one, option two. Are you putting the pool as part of the athletic option? Is that correct? I just want to make sure I'm clear on what the pool is. What I would recommend, and we can surely put it as part of the elementary project, but what I would recommend from um, is is to look at the options. I mean, we can we can put it as part of an option here, but um, look okay. at it as an option A would be at the at the at the athletic facility and make combining that as part of the athletic facility, um, or B putting it at the high school, um, you know, just from a from a shared facility standpoint. Uh, but if you would like, I, I, we can we can obviously do it here also, you know, and maybe do three different options: one at the elementary, middle. Um, or you know, uh, one at the high school and one at the athletic complex, and that way you have your all three, all three of your best options together um, to make a good decision. No, I was saying, I'm sorry, I wasn't speaking loud enough. I was saying you you're going to place it, and I'm going to make sure I'm correct on what the board's looking for me for us to do is not change option one and two, but put the pool as part of the athletic stadium option. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, then that way we're. That way we're not taking away from those two options we put as part of the athletic complex. Okay, all right, thank you. So Josh, on the short end, you may not know this, but I'm curious to get started. Or should I have to choose that? From an insurance standpoint, does having a full rate of each of you know, get an insurance or make sure that does it turn up the cost of I, I apologize. Could you say I heard about permanent and what was the question? We cannot find any additional regulations as far as the distance goes for the water tower. So uh, to our knowledge, there's not going to be an issue, but so we, we did not find any additional uh, come off or additional ordinances that would prevent us, um, you know, from putting the school at the distance that we're showing, which is, which is more than double what the distance of the actual height of the water tower is. Uh, so there's no, there's, there's nothing that we could find um, that would prevent us from doing what we're presenting right here. Thank you, John. Um, 
us, we have something else. I think we are probably going to eat as many, kind of like most of us see the black option more. We have some real hair to be put in the peanut and lustre. I don't think I've heard y'all some of those meetings and um, it definitely sounds like something that y'all will support. We definitely like, you know, like people that are going to I appreciate y'all going to have to for the support of us. Anybody else have any comments? I do have a question from, from a nurse, but it was in reference to the um, clinics. It says, were the plans to address these schools, clinic area, or the COVID? Um, will the clinics be located in the easy accessible area of the school? So I think you were having some issues when they had the renovations um, years ago with the high school. Um, as far as accessibility to the clinics for nursing. Catch that, Josh. Um, so when you say clinic, you mean like the, the are you referring to like the nurse area clinic? Yes. And they're concerned about the travel distance from the classrooms to get to the to the location. Uh, the clinics be located in an easy accessible area, easily accessible area. Um. Yeah, so what we would um, traditionally do, and, and sometimes we're seeing a little different, is that the um, the nurse would be located kind of at the in the front suite of of the building. Uh, we have done a couple of designs where the nurse is almost centrally located. Uh, so that way, there it's kind of equidistant amongst the building. Uh, in this initial concept, uh, we were showing it, you know, showing it here that the um, it would be the nurse the guidance and I would be kind of be one suite together. Uh, that way, in the event that the nurse uh, was traveling to another part of the building, there would be somebody as backup, um, as opposed to kind of putting them um, centrally located. The um, there, there's two ways to look at accessibility. One is just purely distance goes. Um, that any student would be able to come down and be in this, you know, in this in this area, go through these doors and be able to access the nurse area, um, you know, the, uh, the the distance wise. The second part of that is purely accessibility. One hundred percent of the building is going to be handicap accessible. So there, there's there is absolutely zero issue anywhere in the building with an issue of a student not being able to get into a space from an accessibility standpoint. Um, you know, as this develops, you know, if if we feel it's you know. Um, it may be appropriate to look at, you know, separating nurse and guidance and maybe kind of putting nurse and guidance centrally located in the building. And the only thing that's at the front entrance is the administration. Uh, that would be something we would look at in design or in the programming phase to see if that's something that we feel would be, uh, would be appropriate for this particular school. I said, this is simply just a concept. We have a, a lot of programming and development of the, of, to make sure that we're building this for Brunswick County, not for Mecklenburg or for Hanover or anybody else. This needs to be your school. Uh, so that would be that, that would be a great part of the discussion. I think also their concern for how to separate, especially in the pandemic, um, being in the pandemic and then having to isolate students, how to isolate the well from the uh, no, the well home versus having those people all isolated. So I think that's part of the concern. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, if we have nothing else. I will take a motion that we adjourn to our June 5th retreat. As a whole motion. All those favor signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah, I said thank you all so very much for coming out. I appreciate it.